actually, wait, hello, good evening. I can't hear myself. Maybe I should have put headphones in. Maybe I shouldn't have not. Hold on. No, I can't put headphones in. If I put the headphones in. I don't know why I need to put the headphones in. Hello? No, that's not going to make sense. Right. Hello, my darlings. Hello, my sweethearts. Guys, I have been gone. I've actually filmed a podcast. I filmed and recorded a podcast. Pop, okay. I've already filmed and recorded a podcast from before, but it's a very touchy subject. So it's like, I don't know if I want to put it out yet. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I'll do like a question, like, should I put it out or should I not? Um, I just don't know how people get so triggered from the smallest things that I say sometimes. So I'm just like, now I get to a point where I'm like, I want to talk about things, but I also don't want people to get the wrong end of the stick. Do you know what I mean? Cool. How are we all? Nobody's going to answer me because it's just me in here with all my kids' toys, you know? Um, so today is my first son's third birthday. We've actually just come back from... Um, Topsy Turvy in Brent Cross. Uh, very good. Yeah, it's a nice soft play area. I refused, I refused to pay an arm and a leg for my son's birthday because he's so unpredictable that I said, no, I'm not doing it. So, and I, and I've noticed with my son, he just, he's a very simple kid. You know what I mean? Like he was running around Brent Cross today. Obviously, he wasn't in the pram. And the freedom he had, like, he was so happy. I could have literally just brought him to Brent Cross to run around and he would have been fine, you know? I just think it's crazy when people, um, parents, like, this is my own opinion, but when parents kind of go above and beyond for kids' birthdays, like, one, two, th- age one, two, three, even four. Because I just think that, like, the kids are still trying to figure out their emotions and all of that. So it's kind of like... A lot of them get really overwhelmed with the noise of like loads of people. And I think what happens is, is that we expect, like we have these expectations for them, for how they're going to be. Because it's like, oh, it's your birthday, you should be happy. But it's like, as adults, are we happy on our birthdays? Like, are we actually great to be around on our birthdays? Like a lot of us get depression when it comes to our birthdays. So it's just, it's mad to think that like, we expect so much from such little people, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so he basically had a cup a couple of tantrums in there today because I just don't think that he's interested in like soft plays and like he likes to do what he wants to do. Like if he wants to climb up there, like up the the ladder, he will climb it. If he doesn't, he doesn't want to. So now I've just learned to just go with the flow with what he wants. And then I just distract him with sweet, 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 sweet things. So I was like, oh you're crying. Do you want a donut? Because it's your birthday. So you can have whatever you want today. Spent a grand basically on snacks, but everybody's happy. You know what I mean? Um so then, yeah, then we went to KFC because, you know, lavish, gourmet. We actually wanted to take him to Shake Shack, but Shake Shack hadn't opened yet. So went to KFC, had a cheeky KFC. What makes it cheeky? I don't know. And yeah, it was just a great, great day. The day's still going on, but the kid has no clue that it's his birthday. And it's great to keep it that way. Obviously, like, we've got a beautiful banner up. I bought him a lovely slide, like, for his cars. My aunt, my aunties, his aunties got him, like, books and stuff. The kid doesn't even care. He doesn't, he's, not, he's not even bothered. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I haven't even said, hello, guys, welcome to the Rear Ellen podcast. Surely I should start with that first. But, obviously, I'm all over the place. I've just been all over the place these last couple of weeks. There's just a lot going on, like, a lot to juggle a lot to do like my skin's breaking out I just don't know what this wants from me but I woke up this morning and I was like I'm actually a mother to a three-year-old as in I kept a little person alive for three years obviously Lloyd helped in that and other people but solely me it's my mum anniversary and I've got a three-year-old and I don't know what to do I don't know I don't know how to feel it's crazy um And it just made me, like, actually deep the journey that we've been on. Like, guys, you you guys know that in the last couple of podcasts, I told you that my son was in hospital um, for, like, two days, whatever. Like, he had a really high fever. He had really high uh, temperature and fever and whatever. And it's moments like that where you're just like, all of this stuff 
all of this stuff that like I focus on and stress about and get anxiety about, it's just not important. Like it's really not important. Like nothing is ever guaranteed. Um, and it's, it's crazy how like we, as humans, we like really focus on like money and working and like living our best life, all, all of these things. But like tomorrow, like the next hour isn't guaranteed. And like, we're actually not in control of that. And being in that hospital, I was like, wow, like he was fine yesterday, like fine, fine. As in, I told him to stop jumping on the sofa. That's how fine he was. And now we're in a hospital. Like it's crazy. Um, So yeah, like I was just, just deeping like how hard it's been for me the last couple of weeks, like dealing with him being a toddler. Anybody else got a toddler? Anybody else got kids that are aged two to to three? I mean, I know a lot of people's kids have tantrums before that because my second is having a tantrum at the moment. Not at the moment, because obviously he's not in here, but he's learned to throw himself back and scream and everything. And it's just, it's just something, you know what I mean? Um, But, yeah, I just, I'm so, 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 so blessed. I'm so, I don't want to cry, but I'm so blessed to have experienced my son and the fact that we've made it to three years. I can't believe it. Like two, I was like, this is mad. But three, three, I just don't know where the time's gone. And I look at him all the time. I'm just like, my baby. He's not my baby no more. Obviously he's my baby, but he's not my baby no more. Like I try and kiss him. He shrugs me off. I try and have that moment with him. He doesn't, doesn't want it. And it's just, <sighs> man, I'm a whole mum. I don't know. I don't know if that will ever settle in. Like I know I've spoken to like other parents who've got like older kids and they're like still to this day. <sighs> sorry guys I've got no manners still to this day they look at their kids and they're like how do I have a seven-year-old how do I have a nine-year-old how do I have a ten-year-old it's crazy like actual members of society I don't know I don't know what to do I don't know what I do I don't know what to say yeah but um yeah so if you guys didn't know I'm actually part of a mum club um this is actually not this is actually not an advert for, for the mum club, actually. I just like the cup. And this coffee I had upstairs from this morning. It was hot. And it's now two o'clock. Yeah? I made this coffee at 8 a.m. It's now two o'clock and I've just gone to drink it. So now it's iced. All right. It's an iced coffee. And do you know what? It's all right. Because I didn't even need to put the ice in it. The planet did it for me. You see? It's the great thing about when you've got kids, you don't even have to worry about making an iced coffee. It will make it for you, darling. You don't even need to worry. You don't even need to go to Starbucks. Just make a coffee in the morning and drink it in the evening when you don't really need caffeine anymore. It's, it's a lot. You know what I mean? But yeah, guys, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please make sure you... If you don't follow me on Instagram, please make sure that you do. Um... So, on my Instagram, I am currently doing a campaign with um, the Delivering Babies episodes. Have you guys watched Delivering Babies? Like, it's a really, really good series with Emma Willis. She goes into, um, you know, a hospital to stand as a midwife, basically. And you basically see her, you know, meet different moms to be and different dads to be and just kind of like walk through the journey. And it's really such a great campaign to be on because you guys know anything motherhood, anything pregnancy, anything labor. I love it. I love just talking about it because obviously I've experienced it twice. Do you know what I mean? And both will go completely different. Uh, Both kids are completely different. And Honestly, I feel like it's really important to speak positively about labours and pregnancies because I know that there's a lot of like uh, traumatic stories out there about like pregnancies and and labours and I completely understand people shedding light on it because it's important to speak about both sides. But then at the same time, um, when I was pregnant, I wanted to have like positive birth stories and stuff because it's very, very daunting stepping into the unknown. Do you know what I mean? Especially when you ain't got a pedicure, your big toe stepping into the unknown. It's not all right. Do you know what I mean? I cannot be serious for five seconds. Um, so yeah. So I always want to shed light on like 
my positive labors and pregnancies and um also like talking a lot about like aftercare and like all these things because having my second really made me deep like where I could have done more with my first um in terms of like self-care and just taking time out for myself um and it's okay to not just like instantly go, 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 go. Because I think when I had my first, a lot of people were shocked, like, oh my God, is that your first? Because the way that you're, you're constantly like going and like, you know, you seem, you seem like you know what you're doing, seems like is the key word. Um, so I wish I stopped and had moments um, for myself. So let's get into it, darling. So guys, I have two sons. If you don't know already, that's completely I was gonna say it's completely shocking, but it's all right. Do you know what I mean? We we all make mistakes in life. Some people don't experience the greatness, aka me, in this lifetime. But yeah, so I've got two boys. One of them's three, turn three today. And the other one's one, okay? He turned one in August. Cool. So I basically had two under two, which is really rich. Which was really, really hard. But I'm so glad that I did it. Now that both of them, like now that my one-year-old is so mobile, seeing them play together after fighting um, is so nice. Like it's so nice. And I know that for me and for Lloyd, my partner, it was so important for us to give our firstborn a sibling because we've, we're a very big family. He's very, got a big. This is why you don't drink caffeine at 2.30 in the afternoon. He's got loads of siblings and I've got two sisters, right? So we knew how important it was for our children to also have to have siblings, to have siblings. Um, and we wanted them, we wanted our children quite close together because I just think it's so sweet to see them growing up together because my firstborn won't know any other life than having his brother around. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. Do you know what I mean? Cool. So with my firstborn... Um, I was overdue. I went up to 40 weeks and two days, um, and I got induced. Now, I'm glad that I got induced because I was pregnant over the heat wave in 2019 and it was just a lot for me. Like by the end of his, his, um, by the end of the labor, labor, you know, by the end of the pregnancy, I was literally just finished. Um, my feet were swollen. I had really bad back pain. Like I was just get him out, do you know what I mean? So, um, I was induced and it was a good, it was a good, it was a good experience, like, overall, like I spoke about in one of my videos, um, I did feel like the midwives weren't really listening to me, um, I do hear that a lot in, you know, when a lot of people talk about, like, having their first, um, like, a lot of, you know, midwives sometimes think that like, oh, it's your first, like you don't really know if the baby's coming yet, like da da da. So I did speak on that on in one of my videos. Um, but it wasn't like overall it was a it was very good like labor. Um so yeah, so they induced me and um there wasn't much movement at first. Like I was thinking that I was in labor as in I was breathing in and breathing out thinking, oh, these contractions are nothing. You know, I had my TENS machine. That is one thing that I honestly, I suggest every single woman gets going into their labor. A TENS machine is going to help your early labor. So what you do is you, if you don't know what a TENS machine is, it's basically a machine that sends vibrations to, um, to your back or to where you can literally place the the stickers anywhere on your body but it basically makes your mind focus more on the vibrations rather than the pain i believe that the vibrations kind of cancel out some of the pain um so it was absolutely amazing for me both pregnancies um and you don't have to buy a tens machine you can rent one on amazon so i suggest that you rent one like closer to your due date so that um you know when you return it it doesn't go over the time, if that makes sense. Like if you order it too early and then you're overdue, um, you could literally be in labor and have to return it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's really good like to get one, uh, like I said, Amazon. And what else helped me? Um, Just basically being in a room, being in a room, 
in peace and quiet for me. I mean, a lot of people like music and stuff, but for me, it was just, I just need to focus on the contractions. Um, so that helped me. So, um, I remember they, my waters broke. They couldn't check me because they were just like, because your waters have broke, like the baby's exposed and whatnot. Um, gave me gas and air. And I was like, please, please, please check me, check me. And then they checked me and were like, oh my gosh, you're nine centimeters. So I had to rush me upstairs. By the time I got upstairs, I was 10 centimeters and then it was ready to put, I was ready to push. And I pushed and pushed, ring a fire, it was crazy. Um, but then my son was here and it literally was f- like amazing, very fast, very, it was painful, but like, not like unbearably painful if that makes sense, because the gas in there was really taken off the edge for me. Um, so I was, yeah, like after that, I was all right. Like I literally walked to the lift. Um, I think I walked to the lift with my son in my arms, I think. Um, I literally, everyone's saying happy birthday to my son. I'm so sorry. I literally, yeah, I literally was up and ready to go like as soon as I gave birth. So that was, that was really good. Like a really good uh, pregnancy and labor. Um, I didn't really have much nausea on the pregnancy. I didn't really have um, a lot of cravings or anything like that. Like, it was just like, I just felt like myself, but obviously carrying a human being. Um, and aftercare for me, I mean, I kind of just went with the flow, really. I made a lot of padsicles. Padsicles are like pads, you know, like normal period pads. And you put witch hazel, aloe vera and coconut oil on them. And you put them in the, and this is the microwave, you put them in the freezer and it freezes all of that. So that it's, it's got a very cooling sensation for your vagina after you have your baby. So that literally changed my life. And then after I kind of like healed with my stitches and stuff, cause I tore a little bit, um, I then just went straight to coconut oil and then just would just, you know, oil it all up and all of that. So I really did heal like the first week and a half, I was literally on the mend. Um, so that's one thing that I recommend is like, look into like aftercare, um, look into like what oils are great for your vagina, what oils are good for your back. Like if you had an epidural, like um, keeping like yourself upright, getting like a really good cushion. Like if you're breastfeeding, um, even when you're sleeping, get a pregnancy pillow. Pregnancy pillows changed my absolute life. I still sleep with mine, guys. Am I pregnant? No. But literally, it's just amazing for my back and comfortable. And I love comfort. So, um, yeah, so that was great. So then my second pregnancy, um, I had my son two weeks early. Um, raspberry leaf tea absolutely changed my life. I've said it before. Um, so I would literally boil like six cups six six tea bags and make like a massive batch and I'd put like lemon juice in it I'd put honey in it and like even in the summertime I would make that tea and then like blend it with watermelon so I'd make like watermelon raspberry leaf cooler and it just was amazing and I honestly believe that that's why my my son came so quickly because I was literally backing that drink like nothing um and I don't think I was like drinking it like for him to to come I just thought like like it will make my, um, it will make my postpartum quicker, like, you know, anything to help me to heal my muscles or whatnot. So yeah, so that was, it was all right. I mean, it was very, very quick. I went to the hospital, they checked me over, I couldn't fulfill my cervix. Um, they gave me paracetamol and sent me on my way. And then two hours later, I had my son in the same hospital. So you guys could imagine that by the the time I got home, like my labor was progressing fast. And I remember going downstairs and not being able to sit down. And that's because my son was crowning. And I was saying to Lloyd, like, I can't do this. I can't do this. That was me going through the transition of like him coming through the birth canal. And it's crazy when I look back because I actually thought it was just Braxton Hicks. Braxton Hicks, really, Rhea, really. But um, yeah, and I just, having my second, I just would take time to go and do my nails. I take time to just sit and not worry about the housework, not worry about all the toys that need to be put away, not worry about all the all the cleaning that I needed to do. Like I literally would just sit there. And I think doing that, even now to this day, I, I have to force myself to just sit because as mums, like we don't, when the kids, when we don't have the kids or the kids are sleeping, we're like, oh, we've got to do all this stuff. And I get it, we do for the most part, but sometimes just sit and just scroll on your phone or just watch one of your favorite series or actually just eat a meal because you know 
you can get into the swing of like eating scraps, just your kids' leftover scraps or like, oh, chicken nugget you found on the counter or something. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, we have to start to look after ourselves um, because we are just as important as, as the kids. We are not going to be able to be great parents to the kids, great mums to our kids if we're not looking after ourselves. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's like one thing that I would, the main thing I would say is just take time out for yourself and go and do the things that you enjoyed doing before you had kids. So like, if that's going to dinner, then trying to find a babysitter. I know a lot of people don't have the same support system. I get it. But, you know, even if you say that, like, okay, cool. I want to go out in the next two months, like finding a babysitter in that two months, just so that you can go and have some time on your own, because we can get into the swing of just being mum, 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 mum. And I think it's so important to have those moments, you know? Yeah, so the weeks before, I would um, make sure that my hospital bag was packed. One thing that I always say that you should always have in your hospital bag is pre-made formula. Um, You can get the tiny, tiny bottles that they make for like baby, baby newborns and the the teats are already sterilized. You can buy them on Amazon, you buy them because there's loads of different brands, Aptimel, Cow and Gate. Um, You can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them in Boots. And I feel like that is so important to bring your own milk. Even if you plan to breastfeed, bring your own milk. The reason I say that is because when I had first had when I had my first son, I planned to breastfeed. I planned to breastfeed both my sons. Um, and I remember my milk hadn't come in yet. And I felt like my son was hungry, but I felt like I wasn't producing enough milk, enough colostrum. Um, and I felt like I, he was hungry. So they offer you to, they can give you formula. But then I kind of felt a bit weary. Maybe it's just my anxiety, just thinking that like, oh, you know, they, they are not giving me as much as I want because they want me to breastfeed and stuff like that. So if you have that on hand for yourself, then you are in control of how much milk you give your baby. And it's kind of like, you don't feel like you're being a burden to these midwives. Do you know what I mean? So that's one thing that I say. Um, another thing that I would say that you should pack in your hospital bag is, like I said, pasticles. This is so important, but stool, um, stool tea or duke relax. Now, the reason I say that is because after you have your child, a lot of people have constipation, a lot of women have constipation. Um, and I wish that I had that for my first son. A lot of the time they won't discharge you unless you wee and poo and the baby wees and poos. Sometimes it's just if you wee, um, depending on what like, um, delivery you had or whatnot but honestly I wish I had Ducalax on me which is like a um laxative tablet basically to help you to poo so I would pack that you know um or just even if it's just like a gentle tea just to help you to to poo or whatever the case is um because it is very very difficult when you get home and you've got to like fully focus on this baby and still like eat a balanced diet to help you to actually poo and all of these things you know what I mean like you don't want to be even more clogged going home um so that's one thing that I would say um breast pump manual and automatic um like I when I f- had my second son literally the d- the day after I had him um no the day that I had him sorry I was pumping in the night like obviously I didn't have any m- milk yet but I was trying to signal to my body that hello I've had the baby like let's start this milk producing going and that literally helped my supply so much like I was able to breastfeed my son till he was one my second son and I think just the small um the small little tasks like that in the early stages of your labor really does make a difference to your milk supply. Um, also look into like, if you're looking to breastfeed, look into what can help you, what can help with your, with your, um, supplies. So Femu Greek really helped me. Um, eating oatmeal really helped me. Pregnant care, uh, breastfeeding tablets really helped me. Lots and lots of water and just basically just being patient with yourself. Cause I noticed when I was stressed, my milk supply would dip or it would, it would change or whatever the case would be. And I think just trying to be when you're pumping or breastfeeding in a, in a comfortable position. Another amazing thing that really helped me was just really investing in myself. So, um, whenever I knew that I was going to have my son, like the month before my due date, I would go and buy myself really nice skincare, really nice creams, 
Um, and like a lot of like lavender smells, like just really, really comforting like products that I knew that would really help me when I was tired or when I was just really frustrated, whatever the case would be. And honestly, guys, still to this day, even like when I've had a difficult day with my with my kids, having that moment to have skincare and just really lather myself in really beautiful products has really helped me to be like, ha, ah, it's a bit of like a breath of fresh air, you know? It might sound really minimal and really like basic to, to people, but honestly, it does make a big difference. And just really taking out time to have a good shower, a good bath, and just, you know, um, spending your evenings kind of checking in with yourself. I know, like I said, like after you have your child, you feel like there's so much to do still because life doesn't stop. But having the moment where you have that time to yourself, even if it's just reading two pages of your book or even if it's just laying in bed in on TikTok, like having that moment to yourself and not having to worry about all the other things that you need to do. I say that while looking at all of the things in this sitting room that I need to tidy up. Um, but yeah, and I think... Like I said, guys, afterwards, just taking time out for um, yourself mentally and also obviously for like spending, you know, time with your child. But when I say spending time with your child, I mean like really just take in the moment and just sometimes just sit in the moment. Do you get what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Because looking at how time has flown with my three-year-old, every moment that we have, even if it's like a hard day, I try and just sit in that moment and just deep that like in a couple of years, like this is not gonna, I'm not gonna remember this. And a lot of the time, like a lot of our past times, like when he was one and everything, I have forgotten like all of the things that we would do. Like I would have to look back at pictures and be like, oh, that's what we did. did Cause time just flies by. So I'm just trying to take more time to just appreciate the moment that I'm sat in, you know? Um, and yeah, and ask for help, like ask for help. I know that if you are a very self-efficient person um, and you just like to do things ha- your way and like, even if, you know, you're not that way, you get, maybe you get a little bit anxious about, you know, giving your child to someone else, ask for help because it takes a village. It really, even if you've got one child, it takes a village and you need that time and that child, your child also needs that time to be with other people because what happens is, is that obviously your child is always going to want to connect with you because you're mum, but having someone else that you can lean on um, and also making your, your child accustomed to other people as well is really, really important and really important for your mental health. Um, but yeah, guys, I honestly cannot wait for like all of the things that I've got coming up this year. Um... I'm really sorry if I haven't been consistent in, you know, this podcast or my YouTube and stuff. But like I said, guys, I've got two kids that keep me so busy. I've got a house that I need to try and keep clean, you know? Um, I've got all these things just going on all at once. And like, there's no stop button. There's no like, you know, um, let me just put that to one side for a second. Like I can't just put my one-year-old to one side, like all his needs and everything just for one side for a week while I focus on my three-year-old. Do you know what I mean? I have to do it all together. It's like a circus. Um, it's, a, it's a, literally a juggling act. Um, so I do apologize for that, but I'm literally really excited for this year. Like I know we've only got a couple of months left, but I just think that like, where we've come from, like being in lockdown and all of that stuff, it's so important to, um, it's so important to just, like I say all the time, just sit in the moment and really appreciate like where we are at the moment. I think we've got so used to having freedom that we forget that we was actually in lockdown for a very, very long time. Like the most that we could do was go to Boots and Tesco and that was fun to us. So yeah. Um, thank you to everyone who's still rocking out with me all the time. I do want to give a massive shout out to the mom club, Kensington and Chelsea. They are doing amazing things. There's loads of different, um, there's loads of different mom club boroughs as well. So when you go on Instagram, just search, write the mom club and there's loads of different, you know, uh, types that cover different boroughs. So depending on where you're close to or whatever, you can literally find a mom club near you. This is not an advert by the way. Honestly, I just think the mom club is incredible because it has literally allowed me to be in in spaces with other mums that get it 
other mums that are not in, scared to just vent about whatever they're going through. Like, oh, I'm really tired. Or da, da, da. Like, I think sometimes there's this stigma about like, oh, you know, because you've got a baby, you should just be 100% happy all the time. Da, da, da. And it's like, we are also human beings. We also have careers and aspirations and everything that we want to do for ourselves. So trying to juggle that and motherhood, we need to talk about it. So shout out the mom club every single time. Shout out the cup as well. Um, and yeah, so, and like they do, they do lots of like walks, they do brunches, like you could literally go to um, whatever you fancy. Like if you feel like brunches are too overwhelming for you, then you can just go for a walk in the park with them. Um, and it's just, it's amazing. And you can bring your child with you too. You don't have to bring your child with you, but you can bring your child with you too. And um, it's just best sweet to see like all different types of ages and all different types of moms and us just having that moment to just vent and speak and be thankful and blessed and just the whole thing. Ria. But yeah, guys, what has been else has been going on with me? Um, honestly, nothing. <laughs> I've literally just been in mom life, like just here, just doing it all at once, you know? Um, and obviously when things are, when things are done and like, the end of October, I think I'll be able to kind of speak on things more, but at the moment I'm just a bit in a head fog. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank everybody who's been rocking out for me. Shout out to the spot on my freaking chin, but I decided that today was the day that he wanted to make an appearance. Does he pay rent? We'll find out next week. Do you know what I mean? But guys, please always send me uh, suggestions on things that you want me to talk about and stuff like that. I just wanted to come and really like, delve into this my motherhood journey because it's actually crazy um and I thought it was a perfect day to do it on my son's third birthday I can't believe it I actually haven't cried yet I'm worried because does that mean I'm gonna cry outside when I'm on my own it's actually iced but yeah guys I love you so much um mwah. you may kiss your bride uh -huh. you may kiss your bride Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>